In today's experiment, we will repeat last week's experiment to measure the resistance of these five conductors and measure the resistivity of the material using a different method. In the last lab, we used ammeter and voltmeter to measure the current and potential difference. Is that right? And we calculated the resistance by drawing a graph of voltage against potential difference. This time, we are going to use a unique phenomenon, a unique principle, which makes use of the principle of, let me see what that is. It's called the Wheatstone Bridge. We will use the the principle of Wheatstone Bridge. I think I wrote it outside your range. So let me write it over here. It is the principle of Wheatstone Bridge. A bridge is simply a network of conductors. So a Wheatstone Bridge, a Wheatstone Bridge is an arrangement of four conductors. I'm going to call them resistors. A conductor that offers a resistance for the flow of current. All conductors offer resistance for the flow of current. So these are resistors. I've named them P, Q, R and S. You can see those resistors are connected end to end. They are connected in a loop. And I want you to look at the junctions of these. P and Q have the junction A, Q and S have the junction C, S and R have the junction D, P and R have the junction B. Now, I have also connected a couple of other things. If you look between junctions A and D, I have connected a galvanometer. A galvanometer is a device that detects the presence of current. This is a galvanometer. I want you to take a closer look at this. You can see its pointer is at the center. If there is current, that is passing through it, it will either deflect to the left or to the right. If there is no current flowing in the galvanometer, the pointer will be right here, I suppose. I'm sure you can see that pointer, can't you? Well, you must get used to seeing that pointer. That's the pointer there. And I'm going to ask you to look for the position of the pointer in the experiment. Now I will keep uh, the galvanometer here. So that's where we will have the galvanometer. Okay. So between the points A and B, junctions A and B, you have the galvanometer. And between junctions B and C, we have the battery. Now, what is the principle of the bridge? The values of the resistors P and Q can be changed. Now, we will use one of these as the resistance that we are going to measure. In other words, either P or Q will be the resistance we are going to measure. Let's choose Q to be the resistance we are going to measure. So, we are going to measure Q. P is going to be a standard value of resistance which we are going to change. So, for different trials, we will use different values of P. I want you to look at uh, this. This is the standard resistance box. 
Okay, let's see if I can... All right. If you look at this, I can choose any value of resistance from here. If I flip this switch up, now this box contains one ohm resistance. All right, turn it off. And if I do this, that's a two ohm resistance. All right, that's a three ohm resistance. That's a four ohm. What do I do if I need five ohms? This four plus one will be five ohm. So I can use any amount of resistance in this box all the way up to four mega ohm. You can see all kinds of values are available in this box. So this standard box is going to be our resistance P. So I'm going to keep it here. I will change the value, say, from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We will do 7 or 8 trials. And uh, this is our P. Q is going to be the resistance that we want to measure. And now, R and S will be a single wire where D is the junction somewhere on that wire. Now, the adjustment is, we adjust the values of R and S. We, we can change the values of R and S. I will show you how that can be done. We can change R and S so that the galvanometer shows no deflection. It means no current flows from A to D or from D to A. Now remember, if there is no current flows from A, from A to D or from D to A, it means they are at the same potential. If there is a potential difference, a current will flow from A to D. We adjust the values of R and S so that the galvanometer shows no deflection. When the galvanometer shows no deflection, A and D are at the same potential. So I'm going to write that down. When we adjust the galvanometer for no deflection, we have A and D are at the same potential. Alright? A and D are at the same potential. You see, what that means is, if A and C, if A and D are at the same potential, then the potential difference between B and A will be the same as the potential difference between B and D. Is that right? Because A and B are the same potential, and B is a single point, the potential difference between A and B will be equal to potential difference between B and D. Similarly, potential difference between A and C will be equal to the potential difference between D and C. And now, the potential difference between B and A is the potential difference across the resistor P. Is that right? Yes. So, when the galvanometer shows no deflection, we can say the potential difference across P equal to the potential difference across R. I'm going to write that down. Potential difference, I'm going to say PD. Potential difference across P equal to potential difference across R. The potential difference across this resistor equal to the potential difference across this when there is no current in the galvanometer. Similarly, the potential difference across Q will be equal to the potential difference across S. So I'm going to say potential difference across Q equal to the potential difference across S. 
And now, you know from Ohm's law, you remember our Ohm's law, V equal to Ri. Potential difference across a resistor is the resistance multiplied by the current. So now tell me, what is the potential difference across the resistance P? Now, in order to do that, we need to know the current in each of the resistance. Alright, you can see the battery is going to drive a current. A current coming from the battery coming to B. Where will that current go? A part of it will go through P. I'm going to call that current I1. Another part will go through R. I'm going to call that current I2. I suppose you can read that. And now, when the current I1 passing through P comes to A, since no current flows through the galvanometer, all that current will go through Q. So what is the current that flows through Q? It is the same I1 that goes through P. So all the current that goes through P must also flow in Q. Coming to C and into the cell. In the same way, all the current that flows in R must also flow in S because there is no current that can go this way. If I1 is the current in P, then I1 must be the current in Q. If I2 is the current in R, then the same current must be in S also. Now tell me, P is the value of this resistance. I1 is the current in it. Therefore, what is the potential drop across that resistance? It is P times I1. So I'm going to say potential drop across the resistance P is P times I1. And that must be equal to potential drop across the resistance R. What is the potential drop across the resistance R? It is R times I2. So look at the beautiful equation we've obtained from that principle. P times I1 equal to R times I2. There I have the equation. Similarly, potential difference across Q, resistance Q is Q times I1, which will be equal to S times I2. So Q times I1 equal to S times I2. I have two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, tell me what happens if I divide equation 1 by equation 2. Dividing equation 1 by equation 2 will give me PI1 divided by QI1, I divide the left-hand side by the left-hand side, will be equal to RI2 divided by SI2. Divide equation 1 by equation 2. And look at the advantage there. I1 and I1 cancels. I2 and I2 will cancel. We have P over Q equal to R over S. Now, this is called the condition when the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. Wheatstone bridge is balanced means there is no current flowing in the galvanometer. When there is no current flowing in the galvanometer, the bridge is balanced and at that time P over Q will be equal to R over S. And we are going to use this. Tell me which of these is the resistance that we are going to measure. We are going to measure this resistance which is Q. Okay, that's the one we are going to measure. Alright, 
Now, in here, let me take you through the setup I'm going to do. This is the resistance P, which I can change to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And this is Q, which we are going to measure. And look at this. R and S are actually this a single wire. Alright? Now, that means the junction D, look at this junction D, is anywhere on this wire. If this is junction D where I'm holding this one, if this is junction D, then this is the resistance R and this is the resistance S. Now the beauty of this method is this junction D can be changed along the wire so that R and S can be changed. That is what we are going to do. We will change this junction D, the junction between R and S, so that the galvanometer will show no deflection. And at that time, the value of P divided by Q, P divided by Q, this is my Q, so P divided by Q will be equal to R divided by S. And now, there is one more advantage here. Because R and S are made of the same resistance wire, well, let me take it closer to you and show you that wire. Now, look at the wire here. This is the wire. I suppose you can see that. Both R and S are made of the same wire. That means the same diameter, the same radius. That means the value of R and S, the value R divided by S, you see, the resistance, the value of this resistance divided by the value of this R divided by S will be the length of this resistance divided by the length of that. If the length of the resistance R is L1, and the length of the resistance uh, S is L2, then I can write this R over S is the same as L1 over L2. And so, I'm now going to take off all these equations and write this single equation. What will that be? P over Q equal to L1 over L2 where L1 is the length of the resistance R, which you will measure, and L2 is the length of the resistance S. When we locate the point D, we will locate the point D such that the galvanometer shows no deflection. Once we locate that position, you need to measure the length L1, and the length L2. Okay? Alright, let me write that equation. When the balance is obtained, what is the condition we have? We have uh, P over Q equal to L1 over L2. Now, can you all write this equation in the form Y equal to MX? What are our variables? I told you we will change P. When you change P, the ratio L1 over L2 will also change. So, if you say P equal to Q times L1 over L2, if you now draw a graph of P on the vertical axis, and L1 over L2 in the horizontal axis. Let me show that over here. If you graph P on the vertical axis and the ratio L1 over L2 on the horizontal axis, it will be a straight line and the slope of that straight line graph will be your Q, the resistance you are looking for. Okay, 
All right, let's see how we can set up the experiment here. Since you are required to measure the length L1 of resistance R and length L2 of resistance S, we need to work out the conversion factor. And the best way to do that here, if you look, if you can see this point where I am pointing and over here, the wire, the single wire is stretched between those two points and the length of that wire is one meter. So, what I would like you to do is measure the distance between these two points on your computer screen. The two points are, well, if you want a little guideline, that's where it is. That's one end, that's the other end. Measure the distance between these two points. Well, I have uh, two red pens to show that this is the distance you need to measure. Measure the distance between the bottom end of the two pins. That is one meter. So the conversion factor will be your measured length on the denominator. So the conversion factor will be C equal to one meter divided by your measured, whatever you measured. I'm going to call it X. If what you got is X, then your conversion factor is one meter divided by X. And whenever you measure your L1 and L2, multiply that with this conversion factor to get the actual length. Okay, and now let's see how we can connect up these. This is my resistance P, and watch me connect it. I have, a, you can see, two connectors here, which one end is connected to the resistance R. So, I'm going to connect the resistance P to this end. That means this is my R, this is P. That means this point where I am just made my connection is the point B. So, this point B, the junction between P and R, is this point where I just made the connection. And uh, P is then connected to another point. And if you notice, this point, this is a metal. And that metal is connected to this point and this point. These three points are actually the same connecting points because metal is a good conductor this point this point and this point are all the same all right and that is our junction a so where is our q this is my q where do i connect it i'm going to use two connecting leads and there you go. I connected to the end of the wire here. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm going to uh, zoom down a bit more. Well, so the resistance Q is connected to this point one end and the other end is connected to this point which is the same as this is the same as this that means you notice this is the junction between P and Q what is that called the junction between P and Q is A this is the point A so once again the point A connected to P connected to R so this is junction B and what is this Q connected to S this end of the wire is our S so this is the point C so I have 
A, B, C, and D is going to be anywhere along this wire. We need to detect where that D is. Okay, once you know, once again, that's your A, that's your B, that's your C, and D is somewhere along the line. We will determine that experimentally. Where do I connect the galvanometer? If you look at this, between A and D. That's uh, A, so I'm going to get a connecting lead and go from here to the galvanometer. There we are. And the galvanometer will come to D now. Alright, watch the connection I made for the galvanometer again. From A to the galvanometer and the galvanometer to D. And if you notice, I have left that end free. And I can make contact with this wire. If I make the contact here, that will be D. I can shift the point D along the length of the wire so that we can get balance. So I'm going to leave this free so that I can make contact there. Alright, and the cell, but the battery is going to be connected between B and the C. You remember where our B is? B is the point on the very right. There you are, that's B and that is C. I'm going to connect the battery now between those two. I have now connected the battery between the points B and C. I hope you can see those points. And uh, experimentally we will determine the point D. And once you determine the point D, you need to measure that distance L1 and that distance L2. Alright? Also, you need to determine that point D. Now, how do you determine the point D? I'm going to touch... Now, can you see the galvanometer deflecting onto that side? If I touch over here, it is deflecting the other way around. Now what I'm going to do is... I have now introduced a value of 1 ohm in P. P is 1 ohm and watch how we detect the position of D. I have uh, the contact here and watch the galvanometer carefully and watch the pointer, it goes one direction and it goes in the opposite direction. That means if I touch somewhere in between, I get no deflection. So I need to find the position where the galvanometer gives me no deflection. Is that right? Yes. Well, watch where the galvanometer shows no deflection. You watch that. There is no deflection. If I move it to the right, it goes one way. Move it to the left, it goes the other way. And there I have no deflection. So what I would like you to do is, I will slide this along the wire slowly, like this, and when you see no deflection, you need to stop the video. You need to stop the video at a point where the galvanometer shows no deflection, and then measure the distance L1 and L2. Is that difficult? Well, let me say that one more time. I will slide the point, the contact D. This is the contact D. Along the wire slowly. And watch the motion of the pointer carefully. 
and when the pointer shows exactly zero, exactly vertical, that is the galvanometer shows no deflection. At that instant you stop the video and then you know my point here, you can actually see that where I'm pointing, right? Now you need to then measure the distance this distance as L1 and the other will be L2. You need only measure one distance. You know why? L1 plus L2 is 100. So measure this L1, of course multiplied by your conversion factor. And then subtract that from 100, you get L2. Okay. In that case, I'm going to ask you to be ready and let's start measuring. Since you are required to measure the distance on the computer screen, we will start by obtaining the conversion factor. So measure the length of this 30 centimeter ruler on your computer screen. Measure it from the bottom of the green pointer to the end of the ruler. 30 centimeter divided by your measured value will be the conversion factor. So every time you measure a length L1, multiply that with the conversion factor. We will start with the first resistance Q that has the length of 40 centimeter and we will do the experiment for six values of P. Each time you measure the length L1, L1 is measured from the bottom of this green pointer to the balance point. Now, I will slide the contact along the wire and you need to stop the video at the point where there is no deflection and that is the balance point. Measure the distance from the bottom of the green pointer to the middle of my index finger to get L1 and L2 is 100 minus L1. Okay, let's start for P equal to 1 ohm and I turn on the battery and let's locate the balance point. Alright, stop the video where you see the balance and measure the length L1. Alright, you need to stop it where it is zero. Measure L1 and obtain L2. Alright, I'm now going to change the resistance to 2 ohms and obtain the balance now. You need to stop the video where you find the zero deflection. Alright, I will not stop it there. Alright. Stop the video at that point, measure the length L1 and obtain the length L2. And now I change the resistance P to 3 ohms and stop the video when the deflection is 0. Measure the length L1 and obtain the length L2. Now I have a P equal to 4 ohm and obtain the balance length, stop the video and obtain the balance length L1 and measure L1 and L2. Now P equal to 5 ohms, alright obtain the balance length in a similar way. Alright, I hope you have been able to stop the video and measure the balance length. And now, P equal to 6 ohms. Obtain the balance length then. P equal to 6 ohms. There you are. 
All right, stop the video and measure the balance length L1. I have now introduced the second cue of length 80 cm and I will introduce P equal to 1 ohm and look for the balance point. Alright, watch for the balance point. Stop the video where you think there is balance and measure L1 and obtain L2. I'm going to change the resistance P to 2 ohms and obtain the balance point. Stop the video when you think there is balance and measure the length L1 and obtain L2. Now P equal to 3 ohms and obtain the balance length. Okay, and measure the length L1. Now I have P equal to 4 ohms and stop the video, obtain the balance length. Okay, measure the length L1 and L2. And now P equal to 5 ohms, obtain the balance length there. Okay. All right. Always measure L1 from the bottom of the green pointer to the middle of my index finger uh, nail. All right. Now P equal to 6 ohms. Look for the balance. Try and as precise as possible where you stop the video to get the exact null deflection. Alright, measure L1 and obtain L2. I have now the third Q value, its length is 120 cm and let's look for the balance point. Well. You should be able to stop the video at the balance point and measure the length L1. Alright, measure L1 and obtain L2. I'm going to change the resistance to 2 ohms. P is now 2 ohms and look for the balance point. Alright and measure the length L1 and obtain the length L2. Now the resistance is 3 ohms and let's obtain the balance point. Well, you obtain the balance point. Stop the video and measure the length L1 and obtain L2. Now P equal to 4 ohms and look for the balance. Okay, measure length L1. And now P equal to 5 ohms. 
locate the balance length. Measure L1 and obtain L2. And finally, P equal to 6 ohms. Locate the balance point, stop the video, and measure the length L1. I have now used the fourth Q value and P equal to 1. Let's uh, locate the balance point. Well, you can stop the video when you think you are ready and measure the length L1. P now equal to 2 ohms and let's locate the balance point. Alright, stop the video and measure the length L1. P now equal to 3 ohms. P equal to 3 ohms and obtain the balance point. Now you should notice that I'm going fast but each time you stop the video and make the measurement. So locate the balance point stop the video and measure the length L1. That was uh, 2 ohm, no that was 3 ohm. Let's now take the value P equal to 4 ohms. P equal to 4 ohms and locate the balance Let's make it move slowly. That's P equal to 4 ohms. Locate the balance point and measure L1. And now P equal to 5 ohms. Locate the balance and measure L1. And finally, P equal to 6 ohms. Locate the balance and measure L1. Now we have the fifth Q value, its length is 200 centimeter and P equal to 1. Let's look for the balance point. check the balance point and measure the distance L1. All right. I change the resistance to 2 ohms and let's uh, now get the balance point.
All right, I'm sure you are able to stop the video and measure L1. Okay, we have now 3 ohms, P equal to 3 ohms, and obtain the balance point. Stop the video at the null point, zero point, and measure the length L1. That was P equal to 3. Now P equal to 4 ohms. Obtain the balance point. Okay, I hope you have been able to do that. Measure L1 and obtain L2. Now P equal to 5 ohms. P equal to 5 ohms. Obtain the balance and measure L1. P equal to 6 ohms, obtain the balance, OK, and measure L1, obtain L2, and tabulate your values for five different values of Q. So there must be five different tabulations. For each Q value, write down the length of that resistance and obtain this table where you have L1, L2 and the ratio L1 over L2. And then, well, of course, you will draw a graph of uh, P on the vertical axis and L1 over L2 on the horizontal axis. The slope of that graph will be equal to Q. So you'll have five tables and five graphs. Now consolidate all those values and make a separate table now. You got five Q values and you know the length of each of those. So you will have five Q values and a corresponding length. You draw a graph of that. Now what kind of graph will that be? Since our resistance is called Q, the relation will be Q equal to rho over A times L. Is that right? So a graph of Q on the y-axis and L on the x-axis will give you its slope rho over A where A equal to pi r squared. I have given you the value of r or if I, I have not given it in this lab, you have it on the previous lab. And calculate a value of rho and obtain the percent error. All right. I hope you enjoyed this lab. Now make the report neat and uh, complete it and upload it. Any questions? Now get back to me and I will discuss your questions with you. Okay?